Welcome to part 10 of AWS SOA C02. If you have already passed this exam, please do mention me on LinkedIn at the rate of Cloud Guru Amit so that together we can celebrate and I can personally congratulate you. If you have missed question number 1 to 90, please check previous parts of the series. So let's mark the keywords. Let's first look at option A since before creating the stack, all checks are performed. So no error will be thrown. It's clearly mentioned in the question that CloudFormation stack failed to create Aurora as mentioned here in this keyword. Hence, error will be definitely thrown. So this is incorrect choice. Let's move to option B. It says it will ask the user to ignore creating Aurora and proceed with the current deployment. CloudFormation won't ignore anything because if any of the AWS service is planned to get created using CloudFormation, then it should be getting created. So this is again incorrect choice. We'll reject this. Pass your AWS SOS admin exam in a blank with my keyword tricks and tips included in the PDF exclusively for diamond members and above. Become a member now by clicking the join button and please connect with me on my social media LinkedIn at the rate of Cloud Guru Amit or Instagram at the rate of Amit Physic. Let's look at option C now. It will give warning message to the user about the error and ask the user to manually create Aurora. Basic concept of using cloud formation template is to automate the manual task. If at the end of the day, a user needs to manually create AWS resources like Aurora, then no one will use cloud formation template as it defies the purpose of automation. Therefore, incorrect choice will reject this. Let's look at option D now. It says roll back all the changes and terminate all created services. Roll back looks good. Always remember that when it comes to deploying cloud formation stack, it's always all or nothing. End of the day, either all AWS resources listed in the cloud formation stack will be getting created or nothing will get created. And looks good. And we'll lock this as the correct answer. This looks interesting question. Let's look at option A and B together. Looks almost similar. That is option A says change the existing EFS file system and activate max performance mode while option B says activate provision throughput mode. Once we set the performance mode, when we create a file system, we cannot change it after it is created. Hence, these options are incorrect. We'll reject this. Let's move to option D now. It says create a lifecycle policy to transition feature files to Glacier storage class to improve performance. There is no storage class for EFS as Glacier storage. There are only two storage class, standard and infrequent access. It's invalid option. We'll reject this. And if you look in the same in the official documentation, it's written you set the performance mode when you create a file system and you cannot change it after it is created. And hence, we'll lock C as a correct answer. All right, we are at question number 93. If we try to understand the question, the question demands creation of AWS resources in a particular order. Whenever there is a need to create a specific resource which follows another, then depends on attribute can help in achieving the task. Since option C contains depends on attribute in some way, if you look here, therefore we'll keep option C and reject the rest. And if you look in the same in the official documentation, it's also written with a depends on attribute, you can specify that the creation of specific resource follows another. That's what is required as per the question. When you add a depends on attribute to a resource, that resource is created only after the creation of the resource specified in the depends on attribute. Hence, we'll lock C as the correct answer. Okay, this question will test your concepts on Amazon Aurora. Let's first look at option A. It says use Aurora Replica to replace the primary database instance. The purpose of Aurora Replica is to improve the performance of the database or provide high ability. Aurora replicas won't help to roll back the database cluster in a specific point in any way. Hence, this is again incorrect choice. Let's move to option C first. It says create point in time recovery to store the existing database cluster to the desired recovery point. Point in time recovery can meet the goal, but the problem is that point in time recovery will create a new database cluster. If we read the question, there is no requirement to create a new database cluster. Also, it's mentioned in the question that without provisioning additional resources and the restore should be in the same production database cluster. Therefore, it's not the best answer. Let's look at option D first. It says create Lambda function to restore the backup automatically as to S3 bucket. There is no mention in the question at what duration Lambda function will create the backup. Can be once a week or once a year. Who knows? As per the question, the duration is given 72 hours. Therefore, Lambda is not the best option, keeping the time constraints in mind. 
will reject this. And if you look in the same in the official documentation, it's written with Amazon Aurora MySQL compatible edition, you can backtrack a database cluster to a specific time without restoring data from a backup. And also it's written backtracking rewinds the database cluster to the time you specify. Also in the same documentation, that is in the same link, if you read, it's written the limit for a backtrack window is 72 hours. Therefore, we'll lock B as the correct answer. All right, this seems to be a pretty straightforward question. Whenever you see keywords like adding custom dimensions to matrix, just think about append dimension field and you should get your answer. Hence, we'll keep option A and reject the rest because it sees something about append dimensions. And if we look in the same end of official documentation, it's written in custom matrix, dimension parameter is common. A dimension further clarifies what the matrix is and what data it stores. You can have up to 30 dimension assigned to one metric and each dimension is defined by a name and value pair. Hence we'll lock A as the correct answer. All right, another classic question related to EC2. Let's first look at option A. It says create an AMI from the running instance, create a new launch configuration and an auto scaling group. Seems it will lead to some downtime by creating launch configuration. If we do this, then it will lead to some downtime by creating launch configuration, AMI and auto scaling group. And this is not the correct answer. We'll reject this. Let's look at option C and D together. Looks almost the same. Let's read out C first. Terminate the instance and launch it via an elastic beanstalk environment while D says terminate the instance and launch it via an ops work stack. Elastic beanstalk and ops works are very time consuming and will incur some downtime which is against the objective of the question. Hence incorrect choice will reject the boat and will lock B create an auto scaling group from the running EC2 instance as the correct answer. All right, this question is related to EFS. Let's first look at option A. It says use an application which does not use encryption in transit while communicating with EFS. Seems incorrect as disabling encryption in transit has nothing to do with Amazon EFS performance. There's very less impact on IO latency and performance when encryption is enabled or disabled with EFS. Let's reject this. Let's move to option C now. Use EBS optimized EC2 instance for deploying applications. Looks incorrect as applications need not be installed on EBS optimized EC2 instance to enhance performance with EFS. While considering EC2 instance for application using Amazon EFS, instance size should be selected based upon the resource requirement of the application. Let's reject this again. Let's move to option D now. It says minimize IO size of the application, which will lead to an increase in the throughput. Seems incorrect again, as throughput for Amazon EFS increases when average IO size increases and not when decreased and will log B parallelize application across multiple EC2 instances as the correct answer. All right, looks like very interesting question. I have already marked the keywords. It's about RTO and RPO. Let's first look at option A. It says multi-site looks incorrect as multi-site will provide zero downtime during a disaster when full production scale resources are running at secondary sites, but this will incur high cost since the company is looking for disaster recovery with constrained budget as mentioned here in the keyword this is not the best option i will reject this let's move to option b it says pilot light pilot light steady will provide rto in tens of minutes rpo will be higher as resources will be initiated only once a disaster occurs at the primary site since this will again not meet the requirements of the question it's incorrect choice let's move to option d now it says backup and restore Backup and restore strategy will provide RTO in hours and will incur higher RPO, which is against the objective of the question, which demands only few minutes of downtime as required here, only couple of minutes of downtime. Therefore, this is again incorrect. And if you look at the official documentation or the white papers for AWS, it's written in the following diagram, the business has determined the maximum permissible RTO as well as the limit of what that can spend on the service restoration strategy. Given the business objectives, the disaster recovery strategies, pilot light and warm standby will satisfy both the RTO and cost criteria. There's a time graph as well, RTO. And uh, if you look in the graph and understand this, then you can very well arrive at the correct answer. So I highly recommend to have a look at this and we'll lock C, warm standby as a correct answer. All right, this question is about AWS organizations. Very important topic. 
and also it's related to some kind of billing and cost so let's first look at option b first it says request management account owner to share cost and usage report from the specified s3 bucket in each member account cost and usage reports are saved in s3 bucket belonging to the management account and not of the s3 bucket of each member account hence incorrect choice let's move to option c it says request member account owner to share cost and usage report from specified s3 bucket in the management account only the management account can share cost and usage reports to all member accounts in an organization therefore again incorrect choice let's move to option d it says request member account owner to share cost and usage report from specified s3 bucket in each member account looks incorrect as member account cannot share cost and usage reports to other member accounts in an organization reject this and lock a request management account owner to share cost and usage report from specified s3 bucket in the management account as the correct answer all right this question is interesting as it's about some kind of access to s3 buckets we got to select two correct answer we'll first look at option a and b option a says enable versioning on the bucket while b says enable mfa delete on the bucket looks incorrect as these are used to make sure that users don't accidentally delete objects but as per the question we want to make sure that the users use mfa to access the contents in the bucket that being said the question is related to accessing the bucket and not related to deletion of objects in the bucket therefore we'll reject option a and b straight away seems like we got our two answers and we'll log this as a correct answer so please 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 don't go away and if you want more series or more parts related to this video series then please do comment down in the comment section below i'll be glad to add more parts into this series so for the time being all the best for your aws sauce admin exam soa c02